This is Chris J, and I'm joined by a very special guest tonight, one that I have spent many, many, many lifetimes with, my sister, Brittany. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi! <laughs> so, the topic tonight is all things past lives, parallel lives, future self, alternate universes, the whole shebang, right? And all that stuff. All that stuff. Um, so, we've had a couple of experiences um, with looking into our past lives. Uh, I am a BQH practitioner. If you don't know what that is, it's beyond quantum healing. It's kind of a modality. You know, you get into this nice, comfortable sleep state. And you get to venture into those past lives or parallel lives or even future life. Um, so, very, very interesting um, I have done a couple of sessions on my sister, and I have had my own sessions done as well, so pretty interesting stuff. I feel like we kind of sat down tonight, we started talking about it, I was like, hey, yo, it'd be a good thing to uh, just hit record and kind of see what comes up. Um, the conversations me and her have are out of this world and pretty awesome most of the time, so <laughs> there's no telling where this is going to lead to. Uh, yeah, so you want to start uh, telling me some things that you experienced during a session? Okay, so the first thing that comes to mind is, uh, so when I get to where I am, I'm, I'm, it feels like I'm spinning, but really, I'm dancing, and I was like, that is so funny, because I love to dance. <laughs> And come to find out, I'm a whole freaking star. <laughs> a whole star. Um, so, that's kind of my origin. Um, Hold on, pause there. Because, okay. check this out. Alright. During one of my sessions, I also experienced myself as a star. Now, when I first went into this space, and it was space, um, I couldn't quite figure out what I was. You know, the practitioner kept asking me, you know, what are you? Look at yourself. And I was like, I don't really see myself. I see an energy, you know, and then uh, come to find out I imploded. And then the next thing that I went to, I was in, you know, a, a life. So that's, that's pretty interesting. Well, and for those of those, you know, that y'all, y'all, I know y'all don't know this, but me and Crystal are parallel, um, which would make a, a lot of sense seeing as we were both stars, both in, in parallel. Um, I can't imagine doing any life without her. Um, and that's because she is uh, she is my parallel. So what do you mean by parallel? Because didn't you have a, a, a session one time to where I was like on the outside of you or something as this... What was that? How did the parallel concept come about? She thinking. <laughs> yeah, like uh, red strain buffering. Um, <laughs> I think it was in that same BQH w with the stars. And it was like a legit, like that's what it showed me. Like the, the parallel lines that, you know, we learn about um, in like elementary school. Yeah. So we were on uh, like, like the parallel parallel as you would imagine two lines would be I'm doing my hands like y'all can see me um, <laughs> so I think that's where it did come from and now keep in mind uh, me and Crystal have had 10 plus lifetimes together yeah. um, some being um, I mean we were male male female uh but fairies. Um, yep. So, I mean, it, it's not just she's all, you know, she's always been my sister. It's It's been to where um, we were in love. She was a male and I was a female. Um, all kind of different scenarios, if you yeah. will. We had another lifetime where we were sisters, too. Mm -hmm. We had another lifetime where you was a male and I was a female. It was like in the 20s. I think I said like, what, 1918 or something? Yeah. In that one. I think you actually uh, did that, that BQH, didn't you? Yes. 
Yeah, so, I mean, there's been a lot. Um, you know what crossed my mind, though, about the parallel thing is that I know I've told you this, but there was this, uh, I think it was almost, it might have been the very first session I ever had. And uh, I was uh, in what one would think is modern day Egypt. Um, however, in that session, I didn't say that it was Egypt. I can't remember what I said it was, but uh, it left me with the question if I wasn't viewing like a parallel life, like the same environment, but a different name. Anyways, during that scene, there was this man that was with me. I was a woman, and, you know, I could see all the adornments that I had on me, all the jewelry. I seen the hat, um, this headpiece that I had on. It was tall and pointy, and um, there was a, a guy with me, and he also had, like, this headpiece on. Uh, I really took note of the headpieces because I've been flipping through the history books trying to find something similar to those, and... There's a couple of places that's popped up with headpieces like that. Um, but there was this man with me, and he was my protector. And then on the outside of me and this protector was this substance that was spinning around. And I remember when we were in the middle of a BQH session, and she was, I think you were, I don't know, seeing the earth or something, and there was something spinning around it. I can't remember what the thing was, but it absolutely made me think about that because this thing that was spinning around me and my protector was like a second layer of protection in a sense. I don't know. That was a very, very weird out of this world, um, you know, type of experience. Like I could tell that we had certain gifts and certain abilities that... In this earthly realm now, we wouldn't have. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I feel like it was maybe other dimensional. But, yeah, it really made me think about that. And I've never quite figured that out. Like, the whole, you know, thing that cycled cycled around us. But, you know, I think about that certain scene all the time. It, it stays fresh in my memory. You know, I do feel like there's a little bit more to all of that. But... I don't know. That's what it made me think of when you were talking about the parallel. Yeah, because it's definitely <laughs> not like earthly. Yeah. Now, it's definitely a, a different uh, dimension where things work very differently yeah. than they do. Yeah. And us being stars. I mean, my goodness. Like, how many times have you heard like star seed or like the people from the stars? Like, you know? And then there's... uh in some mythologies where, you know, you start out in the creation of a star. So, like, that was just really cool to see in those sessions, you know. I feel like that's one of the unanswered questions that we're never really going to know in this earthly realm. You know, we can think of the possibilities, um, but we're never really going to know, like, where, where did creation start? Like, where did we come from? You know, that sort of thing. So, I mean, to actually see that. And I mean, was it our starting point or was that just like, you know, a resting space? We're going to, hey, I'm going to take this lifetime I'm going to be a star and then I'm going to implode and come try again, you know? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that possibly very well could be because, I mean, I also have, because uh, this is my last lifetime, I've also seen myself in the BQH curling up in the earth and using it. As a blanket to go to sleep for eons. Yeah, I remember and, that too. And resting. So, I mean, yeah, we we said it's, you know, an, an origin. <laughs> but is that really where we actually started or was it just one of those? I don't know. All the possibilities, I'm telling you. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> I know I've been to what I feel is my home planet. Like, I've been there and experienced that, you know, was my originality, my, you know, my origin, that specific place. Uh, I don't know. It's kind of a toss-up between that and the star, you know. Well, and I've also seen the rest in place or the waiting. Waiting place, I, yep. I should say the waiting place, more or less. And this is where I've seen, you know, my little, all my little dragons yeah. coming in that Aurora brought me <clears> to see. <throat> 
Um, and it's beautiful. It's got like a, a water fountain and the greenest. Just, God, it is the most beautiful thing you could ever freaking imagine. But it, it's, a, it's a waiting place in between, you know, like lifetimes. Yeah. Yep. And there mm -hmm. again, where do you, you know, if you're in the waiting place and you're like, hey, I don't want to do this anymore, where do, you, where do you go to the end? I'm bored. Send me back to Earth. <laughs> you know, or I don't. Like, I just don't. I don't I don't want to go back again. So, where do you just hang out in the in the waiting place? Or, <laughs> like, do you hear elevator music? Like, what do you do? Like, mm -hmm. you know, if you, do, if you don't decide to come back, where do you go then from the waiting place? I have no idea. I don't know. Could be like other planets. I know I've read in like Dolores Cannon's work. I've read a lot of her books. And I remember in one of them it was talking about how <clears throat> there's teaching planets. You know, you could go to a certain planet just to learn, you know, connection with human. You know, that sort of thing. So, you know, that's a possibility too. I remember one time I went to this uh, world. I'm just going to call it a world. That had these uh there's no animal on earth that looks like these things so i'm just gonna say creature you know it wasn't creature like in the context of oh that's so scary they were terrified no it's just you know there's no name to actually put to these animals creatures you know um but anyways there was this like substance running from like the mountainous area and it was kind of like lava but not quite you know, I don't know why I was experiencing this, why I was seeing this, you know. Um, but they were like, basically, these animals or these creatures were like mining that substance. So, you know, that was pretty interesting. Um, I do know one thing. Going in and training to be a practitioner uh, with this modality, I never, ever thought that I would hear some of the things I've heard or see some of the things I've experienced myself. Like, you know, I hear about a lot of people saying, uh, you know, they, after their session, like even if they had, what's that other one called? Um, it's not quantum healing. Or is it? Uh, <clears throat> it's the one that Dol Dolores Cannon created. Oh my God, I can't think of it right now. And then Candace McGraw, she created this uh, BQH up under Dolores. I think it's quantum healing. I don't know. I'm, I'm getting sidetracked right now. Um, but as people have their sessions, whether it be with BQH or the other modality with Dol Dolores Cannon, uh, QHHT, that's what it is. Um, they talk about how they didn't believe in their session like they thought that they were just making it up but the thing is to me and i'm not here to promote myself or anything like that hey i'm available if you want to have a hypnosis session i'm down with it but the thing about it to me is like how could i possibly had made any of that up when prior to that none of that stuff ever even crossed my wildest mind you know what i'm saying like same you know, like, how do you just make up on the spur of the moment, go into this red planet where this substance and these creatures are that you've never even thought of, never even dreamed of, never, you know, nothing. And in, in, in that moment can be in that scene under hypnosis and tell everything from the smells to the texture of things, how things look, how things feel, you know, what you're experiencing, what you're smelling, sometimes tasting, you know, uh, yeah, I just... I know that logical side of the brain. Uh, I mean, it's even tried it with me before, but I kind of put it in check. Like, are you serious? Like, I know you want to um, be logical about this and kind of check the imagination because, you know, we're taught to, to dim the imagination down so much, you know, but I had to kind of check myself. There's no way that one can make these things up. It might be like so out of this world that the the mind just can't process it. But, you know, like, how? <laughs> I don't think that's possible. Well, and I mean, even in mine, like, it, it's, like she said, you know, it's, it's way too much detail to be like, oh, yeah, well, I just made that up. You, yeah, you it's, don't it's just far too much. Make that up because it, it's just way 
too much. Even like the fairy life, like uh, I could see me like making something like that up if I actually was like one of the people that have an affinity towards fairies. You know, they buy the fairy art, they, you know, right. make fairy jewelry or they draw fairies or they have collectibles and stuff like that. But like I've never had a draw towards fairies. I've had a fear with water <laughs> and drowning, and I learned that that's why from that session, because me as that little tiny fairy was trapped in the water and actually drowned, so that explained my present day fear, you know, of that, but, um, yeah. Well, see, and that, you know, and that also, so the stuff that happens in the past life, we bring that. Mm -hmm. with us sometimes yep um like for example mine is a, a box i love boxes any kind of boxes <laughs> i walk into a store i'm gonna open all those boxes <clears throat> just to see what's inside and you know it's not a store so normally there's nothing will come to find out in my bqh it was a, a music box that my mother had gave me in that lifetime and it got caught on fire in a house fire hmm um, I don't even remember that. Yeah, so that'd be me from another timeline. <laughs> could be, but that's why I always wanted to look in any box because I brought that with me to this lifetime. Yeah, yeah. That brings to memory this uh, one lady I was doing her session with, and she went into the session wanting to find why she had such a fear to cross a bridge, like drive over a bridge, right? Like, modern day, she was to the point to where if she seen or knew that a bridge was ahead, she would stop the car and turn around and find another route. Like, it was that extreme, her fear of the bridge. Um, typically, ones that didn't have water underneath didn't really bother her. Uh, but the ones that, you know, had a lake or whatever up under them, you were crossing over water, water she was not at all going to go over those. And well, come to find out in a past life, guess what happened? <laughs> you can imagine, right? She flipped off of that bridge and that's how that life ended. She carried that trauma into this life, that fear. And that can be a very, very real thing. Definitely. And that brings back, uh, you know, uh, like scars <clears throat> that are supposed to be, you know, our birthmarks mm -hmm. in this lifetime. But it's actually a scar in the, in the past life. Yep. Yeah, yeah, because they say that wherever your birthmark is, that's how you died. That's the wound or whatever from how you died in a past life. Yeah, I believe that one because for before I even started like diving into any of this, before I even like knew the concept of past life, I used to have these dreams a lot. And I don't know what era this was in, but uh, it's back when they were fighting with them big long spears, right? <laughs> And this dream, it was a reoccurring dream to where I'm watching this spear fly through the air, just zoom through the air. Like, it's almost like, have you ever seen in a movie where they're zooming into something that's far away, whether it be like a missile coming or whatever it is, you can he even hear so much as like it breaking through the wind. You know what I'm saying? And that's how detailed this dream is. And um, so anyways, it comes towards me. And, like, I know it hits me, and then it's, like, lights out, and I wake up or whatever. You know, the dream just ends. But I have a very, very prominent uh, birthmark on my forehead. So, to me, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, did I bring that from that lifetime? You know? Because it's pretty huge. Like, I would imagine a, a spearhead, yeah, being about the same size as... How it went in and, you know, not to get too graphic, but like broke the skin. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it, I think it's possible. Absolutely. And then you also have, and that's the thing about dreams, you know, there's a lot of theories on them. But I also have had the same reoccurring dream, which we found out in a BQH session, that um, it's actually a memory from one of those past lives where it was me and you. Mm -hmm. And um, so, Crystal is a, a guard that's locked up. And I decide that I'm going to set it on fire to try to 
get her out. Um, she's a, she's a male in this lifetime. Um, but I winded up setting the village on fire and mm. I'm running through the forest and I didn't mean to set the village on fire, but I did. So I'm running through the forest. My, my dress is torn. Um, and so we had to go in and, and, and work on that and like forgive myself for that and replace that with something good mm -hmm. um, because you can't just leave that open and open-ended um, so you have to replace that but there again you know that was a dream and it was a memory from a past life so again yeah. I still brought that with me and still held on to that guilt and I had a hard time sleeping because of this recurring dream um, and then the BQH helped us to uh, figure out what that was and, re and replace it with something better yeah, I remember another dream too that you was having all the time. The alcoholic man, <laughs> you know, running from him. Yep, you yes. were having that dream mm -hmm. a, a lot. And guess what? Guess who was the masculine energy in that lifetime? Mm -hmm. Me. <laughs> and you know what? Too, uh, I think that. Did I shoot you in the forehead? Yeah, you shot me in the forehead. I oh did. my God, that's right. Well, yes, I did. With so I've got two things that. Yeah, with that shotgun. Yeah. I was. Yeah, absolutely. It's crazy too, because back in the day, before we talked about all this, I used to get insane headaches in the in the forefront of my head, in the forefront of my forehead, basically where my birthmark is. I don't think I've had those in, uh, you know, many, many, many years, but. Uh, that's the thing about understanding and really honing in on where these things come from because you're able to actually heal a little something something from those experiences so that you don't have that physical pain in this lifetime well and also um, sorry for circling back uh, but even in, in that lifetime to where you was the, the alcoholic um, abuser abuser um, you're like, I, I remember this is what we were talking about with the details of the BQH. Um, the name was Giuseppe. Uh -huh. Like, I mean, like, where would I have got, you know, like, where would I have got that from? And I can even hear like the voice that I had in that lifetime saying Giuseppe. <laughs> like, and that's exactly how it sounded. <laughs> and so, I mean, um, they're definitely legit, and it's not just, you know, like imagination, you yeah. know? Yeah, yep. So, yeah, I feel like there's reasons for anything that you're, like, really experiencing in the present, you know? <clears throat> I'm trying to think if I've ever actually had something to where, like, a parallel type of situation was affecting me in this, in this lifetime. Like, that would be something. Like, not only do you have you know, past life, and I'm using quotation marks as I say that because, you know, I don't know if you guys have been tuning in for quite some time, but I really don't feel like time is in a linear format the way that we're taught, you know, mm -hmm. past, present, future. I feel like it's almost like a circle, and within those circles are like these dimensional lines, and you have so many alternate realities, so many parallel lives on different planes and different dimensions and I mean that's uh, that's as good as I can explain it because it's very hard for the human mind to actually grasp that concept but if you can imagine you know being on the timeline that you're on now and then let's say that you could take a peek into those timelines you would see one right beside you one right beside you one right beside you and so on and so on and so on and then you got all the past present and future happening at the same time you know, so I'm sure there is some sort of, you know, connection to those parallel lives that actually affect this life, too. Yeah, because they're going on at the same time. Yeah. Because they are linear on the same timelines. And that's a lot to, you know, it's a lot to process. But that's also why we may feel them so deeply. Yeah, yeah. The only thing that comes to mind as far as like a parallel life um, kind of affecting me in a way. It wasn't in a negative way. I feel like, it, not to get in a super long story, I feel like I helped the other me 
to heal a part of themselves, which in turn helped me also, if that makes any sort of sense. So, you know, it's almost like, and the whole reason why I say that is because I actually believe nowadays, I used to believe in the concept of spirit guides. However, now I do kind of feel like we still have that one, that, that core guide in a sense, but there's also this openness to allow for that to evolve in the way I think about that because I actually had an experience before to where I was like laying in the bed crying and I could hear a voice coming through talking to me and at that time you know it was a time period where I actually believed in spirit guides in that way but fast forward a couple years prior to that I was laying in the bed and I was doing some shadow work like trauma work and I was reaching back in my imagination through time and space to that me that was crying in the bed and I was speaking to her and then it dawned on me oh shit like I got goosebumps like that was me I thought at that time it was a spirit guide but it was actually me So, that's super interesting. It also calls into mind, I don't know about you guys, how you were growing up, if you were, like, really open and receptive to, like, messages coming through and stuff like that. But, you know, there were times when I was little when I could hear a voice trying to comfort me and trying to talk to me. And as I've gotten older and went through the process of healing internally and healing my inner child, I started talking to myself. I would go back to that time frame that was bothering me something that I needed you know I would figure out and assess the situation like something that I needed you needed not to feel alone I'm here I'm here for you you're never alone but thinking back on those experiences I'm like but I heard that then I heard somebody comfort in me you know I heard somebody saying I'm here for you you're not alone you know that sort of thing so I don't know that really broadened my view on the whole topic of spirit guides too (laughs) i mean that's a yeah that's a really good concept now i know i know my head uh spirit guide i'm not really sure what she is but her name is aurora yeah um i've met her in my bqh sessions more than once uh every time actually she greets me and she's very excited to see me um, and again, you know, I couldn't imagine this this lady. Um, <laughs> so, but she's so happy and so motherly, um, and she is the head of. I guess you could. I, I'm not. I'm not really sure because now I look back on it, and I'm like, huh. After you saying that, I'm like, huh. Like, is that you in the future? Was that just me? Ooh, like, is that your higher self? You know how we have this this version of, like, our higher self that we can always be connected to, you know? Like, is that your version of your higher self? Right. And does that happen? (laughs) I mean, could it happen just subconsciously and you not even be aware and not even have to go through time and space to get to Oh, yeah, I think so. Well, I mean, if you really think about it, during the hypnosis section, you are going through time and space you know True. so it would be the same concept but it also calls into mind a question like uh, you know we were having a conversation earlier about the collective unconscious and the archetypes like Mm -hmm. you know what if there's like uh, some sort of pyramid to this thing you know what I'm saying like (laughs) you know she's (laughs) over a collective of you know certain beings let's not even say humans but like beings you know what if she's some sort of or like, you know, there is an Aurora Archangel. Right. You know? Absolutely. What if what if that, you know? I don't know. Maybe that's something that needs to be explored further in another BQH. Yeah, and maybe but, she's uh some I mean, and some may call her guardian angel, quote quote. Yeah. You but know. you know what? If so, but like let's say that that is the highest version of you. That is your higher self. And you're kind of beamed down here on this earth and living out in all of these fragments across all kind of different parallel lives. And she's like that main source. That would still be a collective archetype, Mm -hmm. you know, just to think of it in that way. 
you know, and like, and all of yous are fragments of her. <laughs> uh, this is kind of mind blowing to even think about this stuff, you know. And, and in other words, wouldn't you yourself be the archetype or the angel or the guardian angel or the, you know, that. <laughs> right, because you do have fragments of yourself. I've met one. Yeah, for sure. You know, um, I've met, well, uh, I mean, I think, I think that little girl that just come up and hugged me was one of my fragments. Um, but I've, I've definitely met a fragment. You've met a fragment of, of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it is like, you can absolutely be your true, absolute self with no kind of mask. You just feel it. Yeah. You just feel so, it. So, ooh, let me ask you this. In the presence of Aurora during that session, did you feel that sort of frequency? Like you could just 100% be yourself? Or did you look at her and view her as like grander than you? She didn't make me feel like she was grander. She was so, she was so happy to see me that I feel like it was welcoming home a part of herself. Yeah, yeah, that's what it sounds like. It sounds like you are actually her, which goes back to the whole concept of us actually being the spirit guides all along. Right. There or yeah, there even even the stars quote quote. Like you said, it's more like energy because it's not like I had a physical form. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, it was just kind of me dancing up there and I, you know, in, in, in space. So that would make actually way more sense for us to be uh, from a different dimension, if, mm -hmm. if, if you will. You yeah. know what I mean? Hmm. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> it is. A, I mean, it That's is a, a lot. lot to process. I mean, it really is. I don't think I've ever met a, a that portion of me that's like, you know, the the highest version of myself. I don't think I've ever actually met a person. I met something pretty close, like my mother healer type of energy that I integrated. You know, she was from a quote unquote past life. You know, we kind of helped each other heal in this lifetime and in that lifetime but I feel like she was more like the another fragment of me you know so did you feel like she was grander than you or you no not at all I, I felt like I felt excitement for sure just getting to know her I uh, here's the thing is that when she first started stepping in I knew that this is this was still during a time to where I was like you know I I communicate with the these I have to say other parts of me now, but I communicated with my spirit guides, right? And so this was during a time where I knew for sure, like a new spirit guy was stepping forward. You know, she had a different tone of voice. She had a different frequency. She, you know, she, um, relayed the messages different from anyone I had ever known or, you know, worked with in a sense. So I knew somebody new was stepping in, but I couldn't quite figure out what she was trying to tell me. It's almost like she spoke a different language, for one. Um, not only in an audible way, but, like, her symbols and stuff were completely different. So, I couldn't quite understand, you know, how to communicate with her. So, I wound up having a BQH session to get to know this uh, other fragment of me, this spirit guide. And she gave me quite a lot. You know, she told me I would uh, be working with the essence of fire. And that led me down a whole path of doing a Tibetan ritual of soul recalling. Um, <laughs> and I really got to learn the element of fire and the essence of fire. Um, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't ever feel like she was like grander than me. I felt like she was an external me and I never looked at spirit guides as something, you know, m more than me or, you know, better than me because they know, <laughs> you know, they know better. I, I guess I've always had this uh, feeling that God is simply meant to help guide you in the best way that they think they can. Are they <laughs> always going to be right? Am I always right? No. Are the other fragments of me 
no, aka spirit guides, are they always right? Heck no, you know, but together, that's power. <laughs> that's power right there. And along the ways, like every time I've learned this about myself and learned these fragments of me, there's an integration that takes place. So it's almost like, you know, two becomes one type of concept going on, you know, and I take on this, this certain energy of that being. So, yeah. <laughs> I think that would definitely make sense, too, because you remember you remember when I was dating the one before this one, mm -hmm. and I heard, that's him. Well, I thought it was like, hey, that's that's him, that's the one, you know, <laughs> this and that, come to find out, yeah, 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 that's him. Yeah, that's him, all right. Yeah, but that, yeah, exactly, that's him. <laughs> But it wasn't what I thought. You're right, right. It was. Yep. And in the voice that it came in, it could have been you or me. Right. To, to be honest with you, in a different timeline. Because we knew what this self didn't know. Yep. In this timeline. Yep. So, and there again, I would think that it's all happening at yep. the same time. You know what that kind of makes me think about is like, let's say that was you in that other, in that past life let's say that was you and you that you was like connecting across time and space to you now and saying that's him like maybe she was in a dream maybe she was in a hypnosis for all we know but i've thought about this before like helping each other out type thing and this actually aligns with another thing i was reading the nostradamus text with uh dolores cannon and through those books and she also posed the question of is nostradamus telling us the future or are we reaching back through time and space you know and telling him the future you know because he was asking uh, and, and they were doing this via the QHHT, right? So, you know, this was under hypnosis that this was actually happening. And it wasn't like Nostradamus was in the chair, but it was a client of hers. And they were going back through the client and Nostradamus was connecting to them. So it's very interesting that he was asking questions about the future also, or they would tell him certain things. So, you know, he was one of the great, you know, uh, psychic astrologers you know that sort of thing that left all of these stanzas as and a lot of people interpret those as um, him predicting the future right if you have never heard of him you have got to go look him up uh, but the fact is is that that kind of makes me think of that like this uh, play that we have with these you know other and, and who knows, like he could have been another fragment of the client that was laying in the, in the chair. Then that just never came up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and they were actually helping each other in some form or fashion. So very, very interesting stuff there. But I do, I really believe that we reach across the barriers of time and space and help each other. Whether you want to call it angels, spirit guides, or just simply fragments of yourself like there's something going on there <laughs> yeah whatever you want to call it whatever you want to name it there is some kind of well there's always a balance period yep and no matter what you do feminine masculine balance i mean there's balance to everything, everything. yep so i mean it i mean that would definitely make sense to me um to go either way yep you know for sure yeah well, I guess this about wraps it up. We definitely appreciate you tuning in, and we'll see if uh, we can ever get our special guest back on the show to have some more of these talks. Yay! <laughs> Good night! Bye, thanks for having me. <laughs>